Oh, oh my god. <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really good. Hi guys, so I couldn't pass up the opportunity to intro with the T-Rex in the background. Um, this week we are doing something special. Uh, we've not done a review for a while. These are three incredible washes that I've tried out recently. One of them is my favorite um, wash I've ever used, actually. We asked you what you thought about them. It seems that you're in agreement as well. There is one problem that I'll cover kind of towards the end of the video, which is just something to avoid in your methods of using them. You can't quite use them exactly like other stuff. If you haven't heard of them, uh, some people said that supply is a bit difficult, so I've had them added to our website. I'll pop a link below. But anyway, let us know what you think of them. We've found any amazing uses and uh, what you think of the video. Also, let us know if you'd like to see any more reviews of good stuff uh, in the future. I'm not interested in reviewing things that aren't good. Let's jump in. I'm going to go and look at dinosaurs. Great. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got Proquil's Black, Flesh, and Brown Wash. I've prepared some primary school primary colored test pieces, and we're just going to see how they go down. I'm going to put them down diluted with water, but also probably pretty importantly because we know how much of a difference mediums make, whether it is technical medium of Lamian or contrast or, you know, metallic medium. There's a load of mediums out there. This is the one that has been designed, the Miracle Glaze and Wash Medium. This isn't the first time I've used them. In fact, I've been using this wash for quite a while. And as a spoiler, this is probably one of the best washes I've used in my life. These ones um, are brilliant. They're not quite as magical as the black, but you know, given that's my favorite wash ever, that's not really a criticism. This one, I think has some uses that aren't necessarily what you would think, given that it's called Flesh Wash. So let's crack on. Let's begin with the black. I'll come with agitators in them. They have the Pro Quill bottles, which are definitely divisive. They're level hey, um, You can buy the different uh, lids for their bottles. They are available. So if you like the paint but don't like the bottle, then you can change the lid. Right, so off the bat, how would I describe this? It feels a little bit more old-fashioned, kind of like the old GW washes. I don't think you should be using these mega thick. I don't know if that changes using the medium or not because I've been using them kind of naked, but uh, let's see how they look. Uh, we've got Mephisto on red as the tester for this. How are we looking neat? So as ever, you really do want to mop it up. Keep the same orientation on your piece while it's drying. work with gravity initially so that it doesn't pull it in any different directions. So straight away here we have some pretty tasty black lining. Uh, now black does look pretty good over red often so um, that's probably to be expected. Generally you'll find that the, the lighter the colour the less forgiving it is on the darker washes so let's give it a go. Again I'm just um, I'm just using this with water. I've not even used the medium so you got to presume that the behavior is going to be even better. I mean, just look at that behavior. Isn't that nuts? That is ridiculous. Insta black lining. Again, don't, it's not going to, it's not literally magic. You do have to work with it, but if you don't want it pulling or whatever, you've got just about enough working time to do that. Now, the one downside of these washes, I would say, is that they do start drying fairly quick. And you'll get this kind of film where they've begun drying. If you agitate that before it's fully dry, you'll kind of peel it back in a little latexy fashion. I'll see if I can kind of do that badly on purpose somewhere else towards the end of this. Right, I'm gonna rock it through now and uh, we'll see how it looks on the other surfaces again. Okay, we're probably gonna get an example of the film at the side of my Petri dish here. So we are over, this is um, Cabalite Green, but it's been put over black base. I love this color, actually. Just taking my brush off there into the background to, um... oh, it's got some fluff on it. Okay. Moving it from the areas where it pulls. They're great, guys. Look at that behavior. Now we prepared a kind of, um, this is a Zenithal slap chopped-ish shoulder pad. See how it behaves here. Just the same with the others. We're going to work with it, pull it down with gravity, get it where we want. 
saturate the brush with water and then we will pull it pull it to where we want it god that looks good they work well with airbrushing um really really do notice i'm trying to leave it at the same orientation to dry you can't notice it's not on camera um these are being left to dry like this not like that you do not want to change the orientation of your piece as it's drying you pick one orientation which is normally going to be standard as a model would be standing up um, so if it's on a base generally you don't have problems but don't play around with that orientation try, try and keep it the same during painting and during drying again just diluted with water this is a this is a one for the old school people out there this is an old games workshop absolute favorite color of a lot of people do people know what it is? Not from the current range. Damn, look at that. It's just it just behaves. It's the behavior of this. Like black's black, but um my god, does this do exactly what you want it to? Just incredible. Do you want it to work exactly how you'd like? Okay, it is. It's just great. So good. Okay. That's the uh that's the black. The black is the home run superstar. Um, these ones are a little bit different. Let's go for the flesh wash next. Like I said, I wouldn't necessarily expect to be doing flesh wash things with the one called flesh wash. In fact, I would lean much more heavily towards kind of weathering and shading of areas. Um, it should do some special stuff on yellow, uh, given how it has behaved so far when I've used it. So let's test that one out first. Yellow and brown generally play together pretty well, so I'm going to drag that hair down. Again, check out where it's pulling here. Mop it up. Again, mop it up. Make sure that we've got all of the pad. Oh, it's really good. I mean, it was going to look good on yellow, so I shouldn't be surprised about that really, but it looks great on it. Red, my fist on. It, it's barely going to do anything on this. You'd imagine it's just not quite strong enough to show up. But still, pull it away from the recesses. I'll try using it stronger on the on the green. This should look kind of like weathering, I imagine, when it's dried. Mop it up, mop it up. Also make sure that <laughs> will help gravity on its way, right? And then I've no idea how it's gonna behave over this. Let's find out. going through quick one more to go turquoise is a pretty strange color to be using this over but we do want to see how it's going to behave in a load of different ways again i imagine we're going to look we're going to end up looking a little bit more like rust or something to do with aging here than you know fancy shading or anything but we'll find out this one could end up looking quite cool actually Pull the excess out, especially of areas like this. You're really going to get quite a lot of excess paint in them. Okay, now onto the brown. I've heard some, um, I've heard some feedback on this one that it's not quite the brown people would would have expected. Uh, I think that's probably because just because there's been the GW like not lightest brown has has been heavily used always in both the shades and the washes. So if you're not competing with Devlin Mud, you know, what are you doing? Um, this behaves great, but it is a different type of brown. Let's give it a better shape than that. It's more, uh, it's less vibrant, I'd say, in terms of the, the brown that you get, more desaturated. But that kind of makes it kind of a little bit more forgiving. It's almost a bit gray. There you go. So you can see there is that, there is the bit of the, 
there's brown tone in there, but it, it is quite a desaturated one, like I said. Let's start this one out on a turquoise. There's a, if there's strange sounds in the background, there's literal storm warnings in the UK at the moment, so sorry. And on the Zenithal Slapshot, ooh, this kind of reminds me a bit of, um, maybe a bit more of like Skeleton Hood or something like that, which is an extremely soft contrast, which is a shade, not a contrast in my opinion, in terms of its behavior. Whack it out of the green. They are nice to use. I think people, when people are doing paint reviews, they kind of, like, there'll be some people who can um, review these, you know, on a, uh, a comparative uh, level um, in terms of, like, putting up statistics and stuff probably more thoroughly than I ever would be capable of, and uh, that's really valuable information. But people don't say, like, this is a joy to use. Um, or, or, or rank stuff on, you know, is, does it just behave how you'd like it? Is it, is it great to play with? Um, and these are, that is important. It is a underrated metric. You're meant to enjoy painting and if something's enjoyable to use, that's hugely important. Look at that. It's worked. I mean, it's all of them have worked well over yellow. Um, I wonder if that just says that I like yellow, but <laughs> they definitely have. All right. So we left ourselves with a couple of white dry brushes over the colors that you, we already had. I'm going to use a black wash with a little bit of medium in it over the yellow and we're going to see how they behave with some of the medium in there. How's this look? It looks exactly how you want it to, which is a bit milky and disgusting really. Oh, physically it's pretty thick, I will say that. So let's see that this is one to one currently. Let's see what happens if we don't even, I think we need to put some water in that, it's not wet enough. One to one to one. How are you gonna pave over our very quickly dry brushed shoulder pad? Ooh, all right. That is a, that is good. That medium is nuts. That gives you exactly what you would want really tasty excellent <laughs> the black's my favorite i just feel like i want to use the black on everything i'm gonna use i'm gonna use the black on everything we're gonna see how this works this is this is the one that i think is gonna probably change people's lives the most so let's do let's do a final step on all of them with the black one So in our Slapshot video, which I hope you guys have watched, it's a good one, I said that when you're looking for something to put over dry brushing in the Slapshot style, very often the most important thing is the behavior of the paint rather than the color, because you can get the color there or thereabouts by adding other stuff in. This behave, oh my God, are you kidding me? That is so smooth, are you serious? That's brilliant. That's awesome. Uh, I need to make sure that I don't get excited and forget to mop. Never forget to mop. Got to mop. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got excited there. Uh, <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really good. So you could add other stuff to this, um, a weak version of it, or even just to that medium. And because you're after the properties and it's got the properties dialed, you can tint it with inks or strong other paints or weak other paints, depending on what you're going for. And uh, yeah, the, the body and the way that it carries the color that you want it to carry. Oh dear, that's awful. Byron, what are you thinking? That's gonna look um, the, the body behaves so well that it's just gonna carry things in exactly the manner that you want. That, that's just great. That is brilliant. Really, really good. Okay, so. We've seen it behaving, uh, behaving amazingly. Let me see if I can, on purpose, uh, make it do the thing that I don't like about it. This is as a result of its good properties. It's just something you have to hold in mind. Let's screw up 
uh, the very light brown test that's basically done nothing. Because this is one is weak, by the way, which is the brown wash here. Sorry, that's a flesh wash, actually. Um, any of the weak ones, you can drop other paints into and um, they'll nuance it. So I could drop a purple into that and that would probably look quite cool over red. Anyway, here's how to make things go wrong. So I'm going to basically use it neat and I'm going to use too much. I'll try and use it badly. Right, we are we are aiming for this to not go well, which is oddly, it's kind of easy to do by accident and on purpose. I'll get the hairdryer out and let's see if we can make that look bad. Also, again, yeah, my pooling. Ooh. Amateur. <laughs> I love washes. What am I doing? Turns out I can go wrong on purpose and by accident. So the behavior you need to avoid is using this too thick. Also, hair dryers do kind of increase the chance of this, but you'll get this kind of this film appearing. So rather than tidal marks, it, you just get a flat stop. Um, and you need to be careful when you're using this. Don't try and speed up the drying with a hairdryer because actually you're going to push stuff into the recesses, which is going to layer it thick than it needs to be. Um, use it naturally or use your hairdryer way, way, way away from it so that the power's kind of got diffused a little, as has the heat. Um, that's the that's the property that you're looking to avoid. Let me see if... So it's not going to reawaken because it's fully dried. If you get the timing wrong with this, it'll kind of peel off. So let it fully dry. That's all you need to be aware of as far as kind of negative properties go. Let's have a little roundup of the ones that we didn't have. All of the yellows are awesome. Just, just great. What's your favorite? Let me know. <laughs> they look great though. Over the uh, Just Black and White Zenithal and Dry Brush, pretty solid. My favorite is probably the first, actually, just the, the normal black. This one's not dried yet, so we can't make a call there, but um, that's wonderful. That's really, really nice. Brown, surprise winner over the turquoise. Maybe it's just a nice color combo. Yeah, really quite like that. And here's our kind of colored base Dry Brush Slap Chop equivalent. Finally, over our Cabalite Green. Pretty solid here. So what we've got is a lot of really high quality black lining that was free. If you're painting armies and you want to get this type of effect and separation between panels, holding in mind that this, these could be two completely different colors, this stuff is wonderful. And like I said, that's probably the best wash I've had the pleasure of using in my life, even since the original GW washes, which were my favorite because I'm old. Yeah, that is the bee's knees. All three of these are wonderful. And even if you're not into trying them out, this is good. This is really good. I actually got to the editing stage of this video with Ian and um, we're not happy with how clear or unclear I've been. So I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of things about these washes uh, so that anyone who is using them or trying them out is really, really clear with what to do and what not to do, in my opinion. The first thing I'm going to show is using them to black line, which is wonderfully easy, like really, really simple. So I've got the black neat. I need to exaggerate one of these on a shoulder pad. It's going to take the wash. I've got some water in my brush, but not a crazy amount. What I want to do is I want to take off a lot of what I've got in the brush. If you've got two edges like this, you want to be aiming to not touch either edge. So I want to come in kind of diagonally at this angle and just get it here. And what you'll get then, I'm going to actually draw on the paper that I've got here to show this. That's your corner. And then with your wash, you're going to get this effect here. So obviously here, there will be the greatest depth and then you'll have less and less and less and it's transparent anyway is you get towards the edges. So you'll get a black line, but the black line will fade towards the edges. Even if that is done at such a tiny level, you can't quite see it yourself. That will make you look like you are a better painter than you are. You'll get a clean black line, but also it will have this tiny, tiny fade as a result of that. Especially if you're putting it in a hard corner like you've got here on the shoulder pad. Okay, let's go. So remove excess, make sure if you just dipped your brush in water, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you often have a little bit on the end of the ferrule. You don't want that sneaking anywhere. So I would do everything you can do to avoid having issues with that. And then I'm just going to go in. I'll do it on do it on this one. Just going to go in here and run it down. 
Now, if you're in doubt, you can water it down more. I didn't do a particularly fantastic job there, not the end of the world. You can water it down more and just drop it in like that. This will exaggerate things massively. It is so, so, so helpful. If you're using a tiny brush, be aware that you will run out of paint quite quick, especially if you just removed some. There we go. Skill number one. Skill number two is gonna involve me using it wrong. So I did already try this, but I wanna be really clear. So I'm gonna use it too thick. We're then gonna let it partially dry. This is the big thing to avoid. You want it to be not dry whatsoever. You know, I can go and get some water and I can feather this out. More on that soon. Um, or you want it to be fully dry so that if I touch it, nothing happens. Okay, here we are. There. So the bit in the middle that wasn't fully dried, I've kind of peeled that off and taken it away. I could get away with removing it fully. The rest of it, I can't. You want it to be 100% dry or close to 0% dry. So work fast initially, you know, taking water and feathering it like I did here or anything like that. The moment you think it started drying, don't mess about with it because uh, that's when you will get results like that. All right then, last but not least, let's grab the flesh wash. Oh dear. <laughs> I wonder if that was on camera. Ugh. So my room's warmer than it was, so we shook it and then got a volcano, wonderful. These are the other types of caps, by the way. You can buy them separately. Take two, with less volcanoes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place some down and then I'm going to be ready swiftly with a pre-wetted brush. It's not soaking, but it is wet to feather it out. Put it in the corner, feather it out with one brush a little bit. and then the other before it's had a chance to properly dry. Now we do have hard stops here at the end of it. So before it's dry again, can run some water towards there. And that will just help fade those out. Let this dry, I'll show you the effect. You can repeat it if you want. Here we are, we are gonna repeat it. Exactly the same again. Oh, we've got a tidal mark there. We can glaze that one out. Okay, let's go again. Working super swiftly. There we go. So that's it for the kind of practical applications of them. Just a narrow selection of the things that I would use them for the most readily. Do remember this one, that's really big. Obviously any use of medium in there is just gonna soften that a little bit, make it more forgiving for you. You can use water or medium with these though, either it seems to respond really well to. So um, yeah, little bit of experimentation never goes amiss. Tell you what, I'm gonna take a fairly uh, nice miniature of mine and I'll do a bit of black lining on him, just to give you some real life application on something where there's some mistakes. Let's um, let's see if we can kind of separate some of these wrapping elements. And dilute a little bit more. See if we can uh, separate some teeth. Anywhere where you go over, you can just drag it in as long as you work quickly enough, which is kind of helpful for this stuff. And even really softened. See so if you can place them above that vein. Yep, 
Nice. All right, we're done. Promise we're not becoming a full selfie channel. Basically, there's a reflection on my cabinets and I can't be bothered to draw my blinds. <laughs> so the washers are brilliant. I really enjoyed using them. Uh, they've been being used on some nice dragon stuff down there. I'm gonna end up with quite a lot of dragon busts on the channel very, very soon for some good reasons, I promise. Not that we need a reason for dragons. Uh, yeah, they're great. Let us know if you've used them, if you found out anything particularly important about using them, anything useful, we'll copy into the pinned comment. Chaos Lord is coming up soon. Another big video is gonna be about trying to achieve box art in as little time as possible. Quite a fun one. Final thing, uh, we've got some really interesting stuff happening at the workshop with the cabinets being produced and stuff like that. If you would be interested in that being tagged on to the end of videos, let us know uh, if you want any insights into how our products are made or stuff like that. I'm off to Adepticon. You are probably watching this while I'm flying there. Yeah, if you're in the States, I'll see you very soon. Please do pop by our stand and we'll be really excited to see our brothers overseas. Thank you very much for tuning in. Catch you in the next video. So cool.